Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It is Monday, August 7th, 2006, and the markets just closed. And we did get a little bit more weakness, as was kind of expected after Friday's reversal with the fa failed breakout here that we saw. Uh, first of all, looking at the NASDAQ 100 trust, the QQQQ, we had been focusing on this prior level of support, which was acting as resistance. It looked like it broke out. It made it up to the next level where I'd suggested that we might see weakness if it did break out, which was that 50-day moving average. It failed there. And I think it trapped some more people in long after breaking above that trend line and the uh, prior level of support. Looking at a 10-minute time frame of the Qs, we can see here that we've still got this uh, you know, on the 10 minute time frame, we've still got this trend line intact. And again, we've got the Federal Reserve that meets and um, announces any potential changes to monetary policy tomorrow at, I guess, uh, 2.15 Eastern. We'll get that announcement. So the market's going to probably just continue to chop sideways a little bit until then. This meeting, again, you know, analysts are really divided whether or not this one, they're going to raise rates. And, and I think that if we see them raise rates, that, uh, well, you know what, I don't, I'm not going to make predictions about what's going to happen. What I want to do is focus on the action afterwards, and I'm going to give my standard warning around a Federal Reserve issue time, which is that the trading gets very volatile, and if you're going to bet on it, you know, that's... Uh, that's basically what it occurs occurs to comes down to is if if you put a, a uh, trade on before the market announcement you're betting there's really no odds in that and tomorrow's a good day for less experienced traders to just kind of sit on the sidelines of, and observe if you're a scalper then it can be a good environment to be in but even for scalpers I think a lot of times it gets very too quick in there so. Um, I may or may not uh, participate tomorrow just based on how I've done in previous Federal Reserve days. They just tend to get a little bit too volatile for me. And today we saw the say, you know, we saw that in, in the stock ideas as well. Let's, before we look at those, though, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Because there also, we've, we've been focusing on this real mixed picture in this 128 and a quarter to 128 and a half level. Let me just clear that out. 128 and a quarter 128 and a half level which was prior support and then resistance in here and the market again it's it's holding above this rising 10 day moving average that 10 is above the 20 the 20 is above the 50 the market sold off today on light volume so we're really continue to be at a crossroads here in the S&P 500 we've got a real mixed market it's a stock pickers market we might have you know we could say that you know realistically objectively that the market broke this uh inverted head and shoulders pattern and that gives us a target up near that 132 and a half 133 level so um who, we'll see what happens i, I don't want to get too aggressive on either side of the market let's take a look just real quickly to put this thing to bed is this uh hansen because last week i was called for being dead wrong on hansen with my short and i'm going to go on record again saying that I once said to sell the stock short here, it fell $6 in two days. I then said sell the stock short here and was stopped out with a small loss. And, you know, those are my stops. You guys got to learn to recognize that I keep tight stops. And if you're going to be playing these stocks, then uh, you learn to make the ideas your own. Don't just listen to what I say. A lot of times, you know, last week I had bet on boom as far as uh, hoping that this stock would fail based on earnings. Well, I guess I should have bought the puts in Hanson. I looked at the puts in Hanson because I thought that the earnings might be the catalyst for it to break down further, but they, I thought they were too expensive. Now, in retrospect, they weren't too exp expensive. They were very cheap. I was looking back in here, I was looking at the 45 puts, which were about $2. So right now, those 45s are worth about $15.15. .15. The point is, though, again, make the ideas your own. And another point is don't buy these stocks when they gap lower just because of their P.E. or whatever. I put one emailer's comments back up there today because he was uh, pretty arrogant about his bullish call in Hanson about two weeks ago defending the the fact that it, you know he thought it continued to look good and he had he had sent that in right over in here saying that it was very bullish based on their PE and all this other stuff that really is irrelevant to what we're doing as shorter term traders and I hope that guy got out okay and didn't experience this gap lower because no one 
uh, deserves to have that happen to them in the market. The market is full of risk, and you've got to learn to recognize when the story is over. And it seems like the story is over in Hanson. And, and you know, I even said it yesterday too that they continue to go after these high high flyer, formal momentum leaders, and there's no room for error. Uh, when you're this extended to the upside. So if, you know, and the, the company, I guess they missed earnings by a penny and the market failed, the stock failed miserably. And, and is it is it is it a overreaction to the penny? Well, uh, you could make a, a, a case that maybe it was an overreaction on the upside and this is a correction of that overreaction. Let's put Hanson behind us and move on. We had been in, we had a small position, a position in, <coughs> Shearing plow and shearing plow, I'd suggested a stop loss of break even, and it gapped down to about that level where that stop was today. So, out of uh, the um, shearing plow SGP, Giga Media, symbol G I G M, I had uh, suggested buying it above this level last week, and I'd suggested if you were still in it, hadn't taken your profit to put your stop under here. So, that stock should have been stopped out as well. CTXS. Um, we were short this stock, and I suggested a a, um, uh, a stop near thirty dollars and seventy cents, and the stock gapped up a little bit higher than that. Worst case, I think you got stopped out of here with about a twenty cent gain. So uh, I'm not no longer going to continue to update Citrix, and that's the problem with shorts. I mean, there's so many good looking shorts, and they, you know, even like Hanson and this stock right here, and a couple of the other ones that we've we've been looking at is that they look set up so good, but it seems like you have to give the shorts a much bigger uh, stop than you do with longs because you get these little intraday short squeeze rallies and these silly little gap opens up to here that then completely fail. And if you're practicing good money management, you have to do the prudent thing and get out. Or maybe you give this one a little bit of time. I don't know how you guys want to play it. But maybe you give it a little time and then cover as it comes back in. But the, the short side of the market can be much more vicious than the long side as far as stopping you out. And that's why I prefer trading the long side of the market. We were also in RDC as a short, and this stock also gapped higher today. And we got stopped out consequently uh, at about a break even. Stocks that I had suggested for today were, first of all, ISE. And I had suggested buying ISE partially on a pullback to $40.10. Now, again, I'm going to repeat myself. We don't want to buy as it's pulling back. So you wouldn't have wanted to pull it, buy it right there. Instead, you would have wanted to buy it on the way back up. Now, looking at a one-minute time frame for today, we can see that right in here, that, that $40.10 level, it got back above that VWAP level. So I think that was a legitimate buy at that point. And then I'd suggested once you're in, that your stop go at about 39.80. Well, 38.980 was a good place for a stop. So it looks like a, a good, you know, a good loss to take. Obviously, you don't want to take losses, but what is a good loss to take? Well, you take your loss and the stock keeps going lower. That's a good loss. So right now, it looks like ISE doesn't look like it's ready to do anything as far as the long side goes. So I'm not going to update that one any further from here. OSIP, I had also suggested to look at as a potential long trade. And on this one, uh, the stock gapped lower, so there's no play in there. We were actually looking for it to, to buy it on strength above this level. So no play in OSIP. Now, Symer, C-Y-M-I, I suggested selling it short below 38.50, which was this level in here. It did get below that level and quickly came up and stopped us out if you got involved in this stock. And... Uh, you know, again, the t the short side is much tougher than the long side. But if you get a stock like HANS, it can be extremely rewarding. They come down very quickly. Um, foundational coal, I was suggesting to sell it short below this level in here. Looks like if you had gotten involved, you got involved here late day. If you're in the stock, I would say... You know, if you want to keep your stop tight, you put it above there. If you want to be a little bit more conservative, you put it up here. Where you end up putting your stocks is up to you. I can't suggest really where you should put your stop. I can tell you where I would put it. I would put it right here. And that's where, if it gets above this level, I'm going to discontinue updating it. doesn't mean by any, chance, by any means that that's where you should cover. It means I'll be out of it because I have very, very tight stops. I hate to lose, and when I lose, uh, I only want to lose a small amount. 
as a result, I tend to do a lot more trades than most people. And, but I'll, I have no problem getting back into the stock um, again if, if it goes down uh, further and, and shows me another setup. My name again is Brian Shannon. This is Alpha Trends Blogspot. Thanks for get visiting. I'll be back with another video this evening. Uh, enjoy your afternoon. Thank you.